Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is something different and although it's not directly related to ham radio, it's something which I got to assist in my content creation and ham radio hobby when things go bad. Now what I mean by when things go bad, I mean those dreaded power cuts. Now we'll go through the specifications in a moment, but whom would benefit from something like this? Well, if there's a need for power and you do not have access to mains grid power, then this can provide a temporary solution. So for anyone camping, beach days, ham radio portable days, battery backup when your mains goes off at home, or even use it as a UPS. Yep, this can also operate as a UPS, meaning if plugged into the mains in line with your equipment, when the power goes off, the battery kicks in seamlessly, and that's in less than 20 milliseconds, with no power interruptions to the devices that's plugged in. The included accessories are not really that exciting. They consist of a user's manual, which actually might be useful to some of you if you've not owned one of these batteries before. You also get a sticker pack, and then inside the white box, which is found inside the main cardboard box, we have two USB-C cables and one mains power cable, which is used to charge the internal battery from the mains. Depending on your country, will decide which power cord you receive. And one of the things that I really like about the Vito Man Flash Speed 1000 is that on top you'll find a little compartment. Now this is where you can store your extras, like power cables and USB cables. You can also fit the manual in there if you fold it up slightly, but definitely useful for cables like mobile phone charging cables, or even power cables for your ham radios. Okay, so let's just go over some of the connections on the front facing panel. Now up here on the top left, we have an AC input, which you use the supplied mains cable, and this is for charging the battery from your main supply. Now you can also charge the battery via a DC input from 12 to 20 volts with a maximum input of 200 watts. So something like a car battery, for example. There's also an Anderson input with a maximum input of 300 watts, and that supports 10 to 50 volts. Now this is useful if you want to charge the battery from a solar panel, for example. Now under the charging input connections, you'll find a selection of DC outputs. And there's a regular vehicle adapter style socket and two barrel sockets. Now each of these can provide a total of 12 volts with a maximum current draw of 10 amps. So perfect for your QRP radios or any radios where you can adjust the power so it doesn't draw more than 10 amps. Now over on the right side, under the little rubber flap, you'll find a connection which allows you to connect to another battery, essentially daisy chaining them for more capacity. Now to the left of this connector, there's another connector that can be used with an optional extra cable, and that allows you to start vehicles. Now I guess it's a bit like an emergency jumper pack. However, you do have to buy that cable separately. There are also six USB ports available on the Flashspeed 1000, two of which are USB-C. Now these USB-C sockets can provide up to 100 watts per port. The top two of the four lower USB-A ports can provide up to 12 watts, or 2.4 amps at 5 volts, while the lowest USB-A port is a quick charge port capable of delivering up to 18 watts, so that's 3 amps at 5, 9, 12, or 15 volts. And that's obviously depending on the device that's connected. The three AC outlet ports will depend on which model or country you're located in. Now for me in the UK, this comes with three AC ports, which can provide an AC output of 230 volts with a maximum power output of 1000 watts. Now that's actually with a peak 2000 watts combined. Now the AC output is specified as pure sine wave, 50 Hertz for us here in the UK. Now having a pure sine wave from the AC inverter is especially important if you're connecting RFI sensitive devices, essentially devices like ham radios. Now I'll test this later in the video, I'll hook it up to my shack power supply that feeds my ham radio gear and we'll see if we get any noise on the HF bands. Now each side of the flash speed 1000, you'll find these orange grills now I presume these are to allow air cooling while the battery pack is in use or if it's charging. Now on the rear, you'll find an LED strip and when you press that little yellow button, the LED light will go through a few different modes. 
either adjusting the brightness or making that LED bar flash, I guess for emergency use. Now underneath this LED bar, you will find the actual specifications printed on the back. Now this is particularly useful if you want to connect something to the battery pack, but you don't have the manual to hand and you just want to ensure that you will not try and draw too much power. It's a great reference point and it's nice to see that the specs are actually on the physical product. Now the screen, however, does show lots of useful information. It shows the current battery capacity and the current power draw measured in watts. Now there's also an estimated time in hours until the battery is depleted based on the current current draw. Now when charging, this display will also show the estimated time until the battery is charged. However, when using a mains input, the estimated time to charge from a flat battery is actually only 70 minutes. If you're using a 220 watt solar panel, for example, that would charge a flat battery in four to five hours. Of course, you could use a higher wattage solar panel if you have one. Now, in terms of power consumption and how long this battery pack could last is shown here. From a full charge, you could fully charge an iPhone 74 times, a 70 watt hour laptop 10 times, run a portable freezer for three hours, and a 35 watt an hour fan for 21 hours. So that will keep you cool for nearly a whole day. So here we have a main DC power supply used to power all of my ham radio equipment. And my Hermes Light 2 SDR transceiver is connected to a 150 watt RF amplifier. Now I have plugged this power supply into the AC output of the Vitoman Flashspeed 1000 and then just adjusted the gain control so that the RF amplifier is outputting around 100 watts. Now here we can see the power supply is providing around 12 amps when keyed up on my ham radio. Now if we take a look at the Vitoman front panel, we can see that the mains DC power supply is pulling around 222 watts. And when I stop transmitting on my ham radio, the power draw drops to around 14 watts. And of course, this is using the AC inverter feature. Now, ideally, you would want to use the DC output of the Vito Man, but remember, this is limited to 10 amps maximum at 12 volts. But I guess this is a good test to show I could still use my shack power supply in the event of a power cut. Now, in terms of noise caused by the inverter, well, I went through each band with the DC power supply connected to the battery, and then again through each band connected to the regular mains and the AC inverter turned off. Now, literally, there was no difference at all. These little noise lines, most likely from a neighbor's dirty solar panel inverter, are apparent with or without the mains inverter on the battery turned on or off. So it's nice to see this could be used with ham radio without any kind of detrimental effects. Obviously, this is just a small example and a quite a limited test. Now, there are some other great YouTube videos on this Vito Man Flash Speed 1000, and they go into more detail about capacity, and they have devices which can test this. So feel free to check those out if you want to know more. Now, I'll link below to Amazon, which is actually the best place to purchase this Vito Man device from. Now, for those of you that are in the UK, I have a discount code for you, which lasts up to the 22nd of September 2024. And that discount code gives you 25% off if you purchase through my link. Now, let me know down in the comments below if you've used any of the Vito Man products before, whether it's one of these or something else, and let us know what you use them for. Also, if you've got another recommendation for something like this, then let us know down in the comments interesting to know how you get along with it and what you use it for especially if you're going to be using it for ham radio obviously something of this size considering its weight isn't going to be used for something portable it's definitely going to be if you want to take it camping or even if you are working portable then you need to get your car pretty much near where you're working anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video